In today's video, we're going to be learning how to use Node and starting off with a simple web router based on our server.js and building out to creating, adding, modifying users as well as pulling from an external API. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of DevJor. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build, um, well, I'm going to do something different. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use Node. Um, Node is a pretty cool tool. Um, if you've never used it before, it's basically like um, vanilla JavaScript on steroids. Um, so in the past, I've showed you how to create a single page application using uh, hashes, using, um, using URL routes, using vanilla JavaScript. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but using Node. So let's get started. So in order to test to make sure that we have Node running, let's run Node version. And let's also check for NPM. Okay, so we have both of those working fine. Uh, so in here, I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it server.js. And right now, I'm just going to set up a simple, uh, just something that says that it's working. So we're going to do require the HTTP method or built-in module. And then we're going to do HTTP.createServer. And let's run um, as a function. Uh, let's see. So let's just do request response. And then we're going to use the arrow function here. And let's just do response dot right head. Just saying that it is available. And then content type. And let's just make this text plain. Okay, and then Let's do the next one. Let's do response.end and let's just say hello. And then we're going to have this listen on port. Uh, let's do like 8081. Okay, so now if we come down here and we do node server.js, It's going to run, and we should be able to open up 127.0.0.1.80.81. And we can see that it's saying hello here. Um, so that means that our node server is working, which is a great sign. So now let's get into starting to build out the actual code. Okay, so um, let's start building out the folder structure. So inside of my uh, folder, I want to have a SAS file, which is going to then convert it to a CSS file. Um, I also want to have a views folder, and inside of this views folder, I want to have the pages that we're going to be building, and then I also want to have partials, which would be like the header, the footer, navigation, stuff like that. Um, also, we're going to be using routing, so let's go ahead and create a new folder called routes. All right, so now we have routes. And just for one more thing, uh, I'm going to be doing a local database using a JSON file. So this JSON file is going to just contain a blank array. So let's do something like users.json. And then it's just going to be a blank JSON. Um, and it'll all become clear as to why I'm setting it up this way. But for right now, just, you know, this is the main folder structure that we're going to be using. And we're also going to be using the Express um, Axios eventually, um, as well as uh, FS, uh, even Bootstrap. Um, but before we do any of that, in order for me not to have to come over here and exit out of it and have to run node server JS again and refresh it and all this good stuff, we are going to actually start incorporating some of these modules that uh, do like supervisor as well as like the uh, the node mon stuff like that okay so one thing we want to do is to install node mon as well as supervisor that will prevent us from having to constantly um, restart our server every single time we make a change to the code um, and it'll be updating automatically down here as it's running 
Um, and then we can always exit out of it by doing control C or um, uh, command C inside of Win uh, Mac. Um, <clears throat> so this will allow us to kind of be a little bit more fluid with our development. Um, and the way that you do that is you install Nodemon and you can do that by going to uh, doing npm install minus g nodemon and then we're also going to be installing uh, the same thing uh, for supervisor and I'm putting a g flag there so it will be a global command so whenever I actually go to run it I could do um, like nodemon and then server.js for it to work. Um, so now that we have the, um, the global command set up, we want to actually add it um, inside of our uh, config file for this server. And the way that you do that is you can do npm install, uh, let's see, node mon save dev and you could probably run that as one command I'm just trying to show you how to do it uh, individually but as you can see here it's adding things that we need here we're going to do the same thing with supervisor okay so now we have these two things so now if I wanted to do uh, node mon server.js it should work there we go so now we are running our server here. It's still accessible here, but um, it's not. We want it to run a little bit more simple. So inside of this, we can create scripts that run specific things. Put a comma there. So whenever we want to run the uh, the nodemon command that I ran, I really need to fund this. I haven't used it in so long. Um, but we want to run the command for, where's it at, nodemon somewhere around here. There it is right here. So if we want to run this, I want to have a short code to run it. So let's just do start, and then I'm just going to paste in that command that I have there. And then let's go ahead and set up one for the supervisor as well. So we're going to do supervisor, and then this one's going to be basically the same thing. I like Supervisor much better than Nodemon just because of the uh, the dynamics of it. So let me expand this a little bit. So now if I do uh, npm run Supervisor, it's going to be running this command here. So every time I make a change to it, so let's say if I go to server.js and instead of saying hello, I want to say hello um, watchers you can see that it is updating down here and if I refresh the screen now it's working so you know using nodemon and using supervisor is a great way to lessen the develop time that you need to have so go ahead and use it okay so I'll go ahead and exit out of that and let's clear this out okay so what I want to also add here is to add just regular dependencies so in this project, we're going to be using a local JSON file, but I'm also going to show you how to use uh, Axios to access like an, a remote API just from like a sample URL that I'm going to use. So in order to get those to work, we're just going to install a few dependencies. Um, so we're going to be using EJS for the, uh, the templating. We're going to be using Express for the routing. Uh, we're going to be using FS for grabbing the JSON file. Uh, we're also going to be using Bootstrap for its Bootstrap you know, theming capabilities. And then we're also going to be using Body Parser as well as Axios. For right now, I'm just going to install the main ones that are going to be used for the next part of this tutorial. So we're going to do, uh, not install, we're going to do npm install EJS. It's going to run through its whole thing. It's going to... Uh, add some dependencies here and let's do the same thing but instead of EJS we're going to do express uh, let's go down and do another one for bootstrap so boot strap there we go 
Okay, and as you can see, all of these are being added to my uh, modules folder as well as the dependencies inside of my package JSON. Exit out of these that we're not currently using. Um, okay, so we'll install Axios later. Um, let's go ahead and install FS because I think that's going to be pretty important to grab that uh, file that we need. And let's do body parser. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and install all of them. That's not what I wanted to do. So let's uninstall body parse because I want to do body parser. There we go. And let's go ahead and minimize this. Wait, is it body parse? No, it's body parser. Why is that? Okay, I was just going to say, I thought it was breaking on me. Okay. Um, and then let's do uh, install Axios. Let's just go ahead and get them all installed so we don't have to worry about this file anymore. Okay, so now we have all of our dependencies installed. We have our dev dependencies installed as well as our script running. So this package JSON is no longer needed. So I hope you enjoyed the first video in this series. Uh, this video basically just goes over how to make sure you have NPM installed, make sure you have Node installed, and how to set up modules, how to get the server actually running on the local. Um, in the next part of this tutorial, we'll set up uh, routes and kind of configuring our server settings. Right now, everything is using the default, so stay tuned for the next uh, installation of this video, which hopefully will be next week. But uh, if not, you know, there's some kind of delay there, but it should be coming next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any comments or questions, concerns, leave me a comment below. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up and I'll start continuing to do more of these node videos, which I think uh, for the entire project, it'll probably be maybe four videos. So this is just the first one. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.